Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we are going to discuss Notice of Change in Industrial Disputes Act. Chapter 2, Capital A of Industrial Disputes Act deals with the Notice of Change. The object of this chapter is to prevent unilateral decisions on the part of the employer changing the conditions of service to the prejudice of the workman. According to Section 9, Capital A, Whenever the employer proposes to make any change on any subject mentioned in the fourth schedule, he has to send notice to the affected workman. The following are the subject matters which uh, such notice is necess necessary. So, the first one, wages including the period and mode of payment. Two, contribution paid or payable by the employer to any provident fund pension fund or for the benefit of the workman under any law for the time being in force. 3. Compensatory and other allowances. 4. Hours of work and rest intervals. 5. Leave with wages and holidays. 6. Starting, alteration or discontinuance of shift working otherwise than in accordance with standing orders. 7. Classification by grades. 8. Withdrawal of any customary concession or privilege or change in usage. 9. Introduction of new role of discipline or alteration of existing rules, except so far as they are provided in the standing orders. 10. Rationalization, standardization or improvement of plant or technique which is likely to lead to retrenchment of workmen. 11. Any increase or the reduction other than casual in the number of persons employed or to be employed in any occupation or process or department or shift not occasioned by the circumstances over which the employer has control. However, this section provides two conditions to be fulfilled before the employer can effect any change in the conditions of the service applicable to any workman. The two conditions are A. The employer should give notice to the workman likely to be affected by such change. The notice must be given in prescribed manner and must state the changes proposed to be affected. B. That is the second condition. The employer should wait after giving such notice for 21 days. Any change affected before the expiry of the said period of 21 days shall be invalid. Now, a case law here that is Shalimar Paints versus Industrial Tribunal 1971. Shalimar Paints versus Industrial Tribunal 1971. In this case, it was held that the shifting the venue of business of the employer from one place to another, not too far, does not constitute a change within the meaning of Section 9, capital A, and therefore no notice is required. Further, the employer has an inherent right. To change his place of business. Now, the next is change of rest. Whenever a change of rest is to be effected, it requires 21 days notice. The requirements of a notice to workmen would arise only if they are likely to be affected prejudicially. Change in the conditions of service contemplated by the section should be understood in that sense. Veera Swami J of Madras High Court in Tamil Nadu Electricity Workers Federation vs. Madras Electricity Board 1970 Tamil Nadu Electricity Workers Federation vs. Madras Electricity Board 1970 observed that it is not intended to cover a case where the proposal is, for instance, to enhance the pay scales or to the better the ter other terms. In Indian Oxygen Limited vs. Udyanath Singh 1966 Indian Oxygen Limited vs. Udyanath Singh, 1966. The Supreme Court held the question of notice of change arises only if a condition of service is changed. In this case, on the request of the workman, the company agreed to sell carbide drums to its workmen at cons uh, concessional rates. The company's refusal later to sell the drums was not a change of service condition and as such, no notice is required. Now, we have some exceptions. In the following circumstances, the requirement of notice is discharged. The first, where the change is made as a result of a settlement or award. Second, where the workman, likely to be affected by the change, 
are the persons to whom the following statutory rules are applied that is a fundamental and supplementary rules b civil services classification control and appeal rules c civil services temporary service rules d revised leave rules e civilians governed by defense service classification control and appeal rules now the third circumstance where notice is discharged is however appropriate government has the power to exempt any industry from the ambit of section 9 capital a on public interest a notification must be issued in the gazette now we have a case law workman of sir iron and steel company versus sir iron and steel company 1971 workman of sir iron and steel company versus sir iron and steel company 1971 in this case the management changed the week from sunday to saturday in view of shortage of electric 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 supply on saturday so in this case the management changed the week from sunday to saturday that is a weekend holiday in view of shortage of electric supply on saturday the workmen took the stand that the change was illegal they failed to attend saturday and sunday and work of the factory came to a standstill management declared a lockout of the factory due to the strike it was argued before the supreme court that the strike was justified the court held that section 9 capital a did not apply the reason is that there is nothing in the fourth schedule which could cover the condition of service relating to the weekly off day section 9a confers a power on the appropriate government to exempt any employer from this provision on the ground of public interest so that is the end of this section which was about notice of change section 9 capital a thank you for listening thank you for your support like comment subscribe click that bell icon so that you get an update when i upload my next podcast or a video have a nice day